It's your boy Nil Gunan in the house, back with another Arsenal news episode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the news episode. Wow, I think it's it's just gonna keep on coming, isn't it? But moving on, so we've got something interesting for you, of course. Also, an Edward and more is uh, coming your way. But more importantly, let's find out what exactly Arsenal fans are raging against Tottenham for. What is happening? Like seriously, what is wrong with us and Tottenham? That has uh, everyone talking already. So yes. We're going to deal with that. Of course, we're going to talk about Otso Edward. Is there some truth about Otso Edward joining Arsenal? Is there any possibility of that? Everything will be discussed in this episode. So stay tuned for that. And moving on. So yes, the praises are actually going out or going all out for Nico Pepe. Yes, we're going to talk about that as well. So if you seek daily Arsenal content, the best place to be considering subscribing. Should You should consider subscribing to it. Well, moving on, so let's talk about the first news that we got here is Nico Pepe. So Ian Wright has actually uh, said something really good about Nico Pepe. He says, since the red card against Leeds United, he's worked a lot harder. He's got a lot of uh, more confidence. It's like the manager has said, get on the ball and do your stuff. He's taking people on, working harder, and then he, when he gets the ball, he's become a lot more positive. And I just couldn't... I, I just lost it when he was killing Leicester City. I mean, he literally does every single time when we actually uh, came into King Park Stadium again. But moving on, here we go. The most goals and assists you could actually see and check out. Thierry Henry was a beast, wasn't he? I just thought, I got, it, I got my hands on it, so I thought, you know what? What the hell? Let's go for it. So ex-Shalka manager Christian Gross says, I would not get the same players again in the winter. They are experienced, these players... But yes, everything did not go well. They would also not have been available for Schalke if they had played often at Arsenal. What? <laughs> Shots fired. Anyways, anyways, I'll give you I, I'll give my detailed reaction in the upcoming episodes. Or rather, in an upcoming episode. But moving on. So Arsenal and Mikel Arteta. Well, there was news in the middle of the week, or rather yesterday itself, that Mikel Arteta is a subject of interest for um, you know, um, Barcelona. So Jean, Jean Laporta's aide makes statement whether Mikel Arteta is actually going to replace Ronald Koeman at Barcelona. Is it possible? Well, Mikel Arteta was linked with a shock move to Barcelona last week. Yes, it happened. But it seems that he's not in line for Barcelona job at all. Now, we all know Arteta actually came through the famed La Masia Academy. He could be targeted by Barcelona. But let's see. So Laporta, who has previously served as the club's president, is in a three-way race with Victor Font and Anthony Frexia, who faced off in a debate on Tuesday ahead of this weekend's election. Thousands of Barcelona members have already cast their votes, votes via post, but the official election will come this weekend. And amid a series of arrests involving former president Josep Mar Maria Bartomeu. Now, one of Laporta's trusted associates, Rafa Eusta, has spoken to Cope. He says, I completely deny it. I know that Mikel Arteta is a great coach, a friend of Pep, but I have not spoken with him. I have not spoken with him. And we convey all our confidence in Koeman. So no way Ronald Koeman is getting out of Barcelona. There's the confirmation. So anyone who actually came up with that shit news, shut up. Just seriously shut up, man. You really gave a lot of heart attacks for all the Arsenal fans. Well, moving on, here's a bigger, bigger, uh, one of the bad things that is going to happen to you if you're an Arsenal fan because Arsenal fans are fuming as Tottenham have dodged a grueling Croatia trip before Derby with Europa League a clash versus Dinamo Zagreb has been moved. Now UEFA have confirmed that Spurs, uh, Spurs game of Europa League tie with Dinamo, Dinamo Zagreb has been switched with the Arsenal actually losing their home advantage for the second leg. Well, but the change has left some Arsenal fans raging after it handed Tottenham an edge going into the North London derby. Now what happens? Both Arsenal and Tottenham were set to have their round of 16 away legs up first before hosting Dinamo and Olympiacos respectively a week later. But with UEFA rules dictating that two teams cannot play in the same city on the same night, one fixture had to change. With Arsenal taking priority over Spurs by virtue of having qualified through winning last season's FA Cup, their tie was kept as it is. How shit is this? Tottenham, meanwhile, will now host Dinamo first, avoiding a 2,000-mile round trip just three days before their tie against Arsenal in the Premier League. So they won't be travelling. They were supposed to travel, get tired and boom, 
we're gonna we, there was a there was a big advantage in the North London derby. However, that is not the case. Now Mikel Arteta's side, on the other hand, will have to travel nearly 4,000 miles as they go to Athens back to face Olympiakos in their round of 16 first leg. While this is thought to favour Arsenal in terms of Europa League progression, some fans were left fuming on social media. So one one person wrote that Spurs getting the bubble wrap treatment once again. Another one questions. He says, why can't they play at home on the same day? Policing and travelling issues are non-existent when the games are behind closed doors. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? When you've got no, no, what a joke. He, that's, what, that's how he continues. He says, a fourth one felt that Spurs were also getting handed an advantage in Europe as well as domestically. He says, why do they get the advantage of an away second leg? Extra 30 minutes of away goals and knowing exactly what you need. Joke. Well, a third one moaned, how is this fair? What a joke. Yep, that's what it is happening. And I don't know how did they get that advantage, but there you go. Moving on, so here's a quote from JJ Okosha. He said, I never knew I was black until I got to Germany. The racism was too much that the only way to really repay a racist was to keep on dribbling them. <sighs> if you undergo racism, bullying or whatever it is, whatever the shit that goes on around in the world that gets you away from equality, keep dribbling past them. Moving on, so Garth Crooks picks out two Arsenal best players that actually shined against Leicester City. Now, BBC pundit Garth Crooks selected David Luiz and Willian for his Premier League team of the week after the part they played in the 3-1 away victory. He says, you can't tell me the move for his goal was not planned. Talking about Luis. David Luiz and Willian knew, knew exactly what they were doing. Luiz looked totally uninterested during the setup with his hands on his hips watching events. His movement across the face of the six-yard box was excellent and matched only by his header, Arsenal's equaliser. It's quite commendable that Luis is still prepared to put his head into dangerous areas considering his clash of heads with Wolves' Raul Jimenez, which put both the players out of action for some time. Now, talking about Willian's contribution, Garth Krug says, to be out of the team for such long periods and to come back into the Arsenal side and perform so well against an informed Leicester and away from home was impressive. Willian has struggled since his arrival at Emirates Stadium. Although he made my team of the week after an impressive debut against Fulham, in the opening game of the season and the full team his, his full team of the week is as follows Sam Johnstone uh, David Luiz Ruben Diaz Kyle Bartley John Stones Jeannie Wijnaldum uh, Kevin De Bruyne Willian Jesse Lingard Gareth Bale and Richarlison ladies and gentlemen that's what is his 11 moving on so Arsenal are considering a move for Orson Edward as a 23 year old enters the final year of his contract in the summer according to HITC Sport. Now we have to talk about it in detail because we have a detailed update about it. So here we go. Arsenal are considering a move for Otson Edward. Edward enters the final year of his contract. Arsenal will face stiff competition from Roma and Leicester City for the French Under-21 International's signature. Otson Edward has recently switched agents. He is now with Kiran Tierney's representatives. Alex Lacassette and Eddie Nketia are entering the final year of their deals this summer. Edu will be looking for potential striking additions well in advance of the summer. So it looks like Arsenal are looking to make differences and bring in some new strikers. Brace yourself, Arsenal fans, because there are lots of new players coming in in the summer. Moving on, Arsenal departures continue with another coach set to leave at the end of his deal. Andy Woodman will leave his role as a coach at Arsenal at the end of the season, according to Football Insider. He had joined Arsenal in 2018 and was in charge of training their goalkeepers from the under-9s through the under-23 level. He has been the head of goalkeeping at the Emirates, but they will not renew his expiring contract. Since Mikel Arteta became the club's manager, the report says that he has gradually built more Spanish presence around himself. Woodman is leaving for not being a part of that group and Wood could be replaced by Ilaki Kanya Pavon, who joined the club in 2019. Woodman is leaving for not being part of... Okay, Woodman has already been told about the decision according to the report. He is one of England's most experienced goalkeepers, making almost 500 club appearances after starting at Crystal Palace. He is the father of Freddie Woodman, who is emerging as England's best young goalkeepers. Now, that's really cool, isn't it? Well, all the best. Wherever you go, all the best. That's what we have for you. Moving on, so Gareth Southgate has opened up about the duo Emil Smithrow and Bukayo Saka. He says, 
Those two boys at Arsenal, Saka and Emil Smithrow, have been a huge breath of fresh air in their team. And there are more across the country if they get their opportunity. What? Anyways, so Fallen Balogun is actually edging closer to Arsenal exit. Balogun is edging closer to the Arsenal exit door. According to the Mirror, the 19-year-old is out of contract this summer and has grown frustrated. He scored seven goals for Arsenal's under-23 under this season, but has yet to, be, uh, uh, yet to appear for Arsenal at the senior level in the Premier League. And also, Lacazette is set to leave Arsenal as well. Alex Lacazette is set to leave Arsenal this summer, according to Football London. Arsenal are ready to listen to offers for the 29-year-old whose current contract is due to expire in 2022. Roma, Monaco and Atletico Madrid have all been linked with Allah Kazet as well. So with this, we end this episode. Let me know in the comments what you guys feel about outs on Edward to Arsenal. Should it be done? Is Fallen Balogun going to leave? Let me know in the comments what are, your, what are your real reactions to it. I will see you in the next one. Until then, cheers and don't forget to subscribe.